I feel good. I'm just happy to be here. Happy to be alive, happy to be able to still run, happy to be able to kiss my mom, talk to my mom. Only thing that I got work on is probably just my, my mental status. I think a big issue for me was I kept to myself a lot. I love to, you know, talk, but I don't really talk about me. Have you been cleared to run? Yes. And I knew I knew in the back of my head I was gonna run. You gotta keep in mind when I was in the hospital, I had doctors telling me that I wasn't gonna run. In my head, it was just like, okay. Like, cause that's, that's kind of something I heard my whole life growing up. If I need to do something or if I want to do something, or if I have a goal, like I gotta get it done as quick as possible. Like I'll do something good. And you know, right after that, I'm looking to do something else. I'm looking to do something bigger, something better. When I make mistakes, you know, that's, that's what life is about. It's always about, you know, proving to people that those mistakes don't define who I am. I ask you about like, what Of course. I've never talked to this guy a day in my life, I've never seen this guy a day in my life, never anything, but it seemed like he knew me. It seemed like he knew me a lot better than I knew me. Um, I asked him if he wanted to talk, he told me straight up, he said it wasn't gonna be any talk. And then I seen him slide a screwdriver out his pocket. So right then and there, the first thing that goes through my head, it was fight or flight. And me having so much pride, it was like, nah, like I'm not, I'm not gonna run from this one. So I started fighting. Before I knew it, like I didn't look down and seen that like my whole side is like torn. I stood up and you know, I just told him like, this isn't worth it. It's not worth losing my life. He took off running. How many people do you think so? <sighs> I definitely counted a good like 10 people walk by. So um, then I remember I woke up and I was on the ground and it was just like paramedics and cops standing in front of my face and telling me I had a seizure, but for some odd reason, like I didn't believe them. And then it got to a point they were doing like an ultrasound on my heart. Everything got quiet. Um, she said one of the areas that I got stabbed in cleared up enough space for oxygen to get to my heart. On top of that, she told me that my lung was punctured too. She gave me the phone uh, to talk to my mom. I heard my mom's voice and I just started crying. They gave me the opportunity to walk. I took it. They gave me the opportunity to walk up steps and down steps. I took it. And then it got to a point where I was like, okay, let me like let me show them I'm good. So I started, I remember I started making TikToks. I just wanted to show the world that, like, even though this situation happened, like, it's not gonna steal away from my character. Like, I'm not gonna let this, you know, dictate anything in my life. You know, I, my mom always told me that, you know, I'll, I'll never make the same mistake twice. And I only viewed it as a mistake because I, I could have easily turned around and walked away from that situation. This, this amount of love, this amount of uh, feeling like I have a family here at Ryder. Um, and, and that's all I need. That's the one thing that, that keeps me going because I know that not only am I doing it for, for me, my family, but I'm actually doing it for my school, I'm doing it for my university, I'm doing it for my friends, I'm doing it for everybody here that I call my friend and acquaintance, a brother, a sister, anything like that. So it's just, it's, it's bigger than me.